And the impact is it's a felony. Uh, you're defrauding the state. I joined the Department of Revenue about five and a half years ago, and one of the things that we always talked about was kind of the Montana scheme and how people were using Montana laws to evade tax, not just here in Georgia, but across the nation. You know, we get calls from people that are neighbors that have just gone out and bought a car and paid their tax, and they see their neighbor driving around in a Lamborghini with a Montana plate. Caffeine and octane is a great one. I get people that send me pictures all the time. We know the cars. It's not that hard because when there's hundreds or thousands of people taking pictures of your vehicle, it makes it pretty easy for us to, to find these cars, identify who the owners are, and, uh, and take the appropriate action. We've followed models in, in other states, particularly Alabama, Florida, California, because this doesn't just affect cars, this is RVs as well. And we decided to take the approach of, we want to put an end to it in the state. So the only way to do that is through some sort of enforcement action like we did with this case. We hope this will send a message to everybody that we know what's going on. It's not a secret. Um, this is not even really that clever. With the internet today and our contacts in Montana, in two minutes I can have the corporate officers' names of all these Montana corporations and it's pretty easy to follow. There are some people that aren't even clever when they name them. If you use your real name as the LLC in Montana, it makes it very easy to figure out who you are. If your license plate has anything to do with the Georgia Bulldogs, you're going to get caught. If you're going to buy one of these cars, factor in the cost for the tax because you have to pay it. The options we looked at were working with Montana and the registered agents there. We realized that was kind of a no-go. They're Montana. They can do what they want to do. And the registered agents there don't even have to be attorneys. It can just be somebody that understands the law, understands how to set up a corporation, and is willing to do it for a fee. And then willing to stand in line at the tag office to register that car for you and send you the title and the tag. So that was kind of a non-starter. Uh, the second option was we work with the dealerships. There are some dealerships here that will refuse to register a car in Montana if they suspect that you're a Georgia resident. And that's great, but some dealerships think that it's okay. They make you sign a Georgia Department of Revenue form that says you're going to take this car out of the state immediately and it's not going to remain in the state, whether they know that's true or not. So some dealerships choose that option. I don't think they will after Friday. And then the other option was to go after the end user, the owner of the vehicles. So we kind of did all three. Uh, we actually have contacted Montana to start working with them search warrants at the dealerships to kind of put them on notice that we know what's going on. Whether you know or should have known that that person lives three miles from your dealership uh, and they have Georgia insurance and a Georgia driver's license, you need to encourage them to do the right thing because at the end of the day, it's the dealership's responsibility to collect the TAVT and turn that over to the state. And then obviously going after the owners. I think that's going to have the biggest impact. These owners generally want to do the right thing. Uh, they may have gotten guidance from somebody that didn't know what they were talking about or tried to circumvent some rule that they didn't realize what the impact was. And the impact is it's a felony. Uh, you're defrauding the state for thousands, hundreds, millions of dollars, and somebody will end up going to jail over this eventually. And everybody had talked about it for years, but nobody had ever actually done anything about it. Everybody nowadays wants to take pictures of a uh, Lamborghini or Ferrari when they see them out. And so it's really hard to, to kind of hide your cars and the license plate. We reached out to, to the toll authority and said, you know, we want a list of, of every car that's registered in Montana that also has a peach pass. There was hundreds of cars and RVs. And with that comes toll records, pictures of cars driving up and down the interstate. It's really a great tool. I've got probably a thousand pictures of cars with Montana plates from different angles, different locations, different dates and times. And uh, you really have to build a map and, and kind of a chart of where the cars have been, where they've gone, how long they've been here, who they've been registered to. It, uh, it really becomes quite a mess. Almost a year ago, I was contacted by my counterparts at the Department of Revenue in Ohio. And they let us know that we had buyers here in Georgia that were buying high-end cars in Ohio, having them shipped to Georgia, 
but we're registering them in LLCs in Montana. So it kind of reignited kind of the idea that we had. So we started using the tools that we had available to us, uh, social media, uh, reaching out to Montana. And while the scheme has worked in the past, with the tools that are readily available nowadays, it's, it's not hard to figure out who the, the cars belong to. And once you figure out that they're really Georgia residents, it's just a matter of picking who you want to go after. So in this case, we picked two guys uh, that had, had bought over 50 cars in the last four years. We're very active in social media. And combined, the tax was over $1.6 million on those cars. And while I understand that nobody wants to pay that kind of tax, uh, it's kind of the, the cost of doing business here in Georgia. If you want to be a resident, enjoy all the, the benefits of being a resident here in Georgia. We figured out who the guys were, and uh, then we started doing things, uh, following them on Instagram, all the way to sitting outside their house and watching the cars come and go. So it really was months of kind of a cat and mouse. Um, we didn't do this full time. It was, it was really just watching the Instagram, seeing where things were, using other media outlets to, to track the cars and see them all around Atlanta. Because you really want to dispel the fact that, oh, we just came down here on vacation. It's always been in Montana. You know, when we executed the search warrants, you never know. I mean, you've been following these for months, but the days leading up to it, you're thinking, man, what if we go there and they're not there? The team did a great job. Uh, we were able to locate all the cars that we thought uh, were gonna be there. Um, we still have one plane outstanding, but we know where it's at. Uh, so it's, it's definitely, it's interesting to see all the work that went into it for it to kind of come to fruition. So we hope that through this case, through kind of education, uh, that we're going to work with the owners. We're going to help them get right. Uh, we're going to work with the counties because ultimately the counties are the ones that register the vehicles and collect that money. Uh, and we're going to educate the counties as well as to what's about to happen and hope that they assist the car owner and getting the car registered, getting the taxes paid so they can go and enjoy the car uh, like it's meant to be enjoyed. Georgia, like every other state, you know, collects taxes so they can build roads, uh, enforce laws, pay teachers, and this is one way that we do that. These people have, have kind of gotten around that for a while, but we're still a voluntary compliance state. Um, until you take that step to evade tax, like setting up a corporation in another state, but we, at the end of the day, want to help you get right. We don't want to send someone to jail over this unless we absolutely have to. So we want to help people make the right choices, pay the tax that they're supposed to so they can go out and enjoy the, the roads and, and Georgia and the, the men and women that help keep it safe. There was two camps. One that said, no, I, I would never do that because I don't want to get in trouble one day. And then there was the other side that said, oh, I can try that until something happens. Well, that day's come. And I think those people are now going to be like, okay, it's time to, uh, to do the right thing. I'm going to register my car. I'm going to pay the tax. And hopefully it'll kind of put an end to this problem, not just in Georgia, but in other states as well. We want this to kind of be the example for other states and how they can combat this problem. And hopefully um, through kind of education from here, um, people across the nation will, will do the right thing and, and states won't have to go to this extreme to, to get the taxes. We want people to come in voluntarily. There's going to be kind of a, a, a time where they can come in, register their vehicle, pay the tax and penalties if, if there are some, and get a Georgia license plate. And we hope everyone does that. If they refuse to do that, we have a list. And we're going to start checking that list off of people that have registered. And those that haven't, uh, we're going to take the next step, um, whether it's search warrants, arrest warrants, Whatever we need to do to kind of help those people get into compliance, we will do. The Montana plates are cool. I mean, especially the black plate with the mountains in the background. It is a cool plate. So if anybody's looking for a very cool license plate, there's always the Georgia back the badge plate. Uh, I'd encourage everyone to get one. So I have no idea if it's going to work, but I'm about to go try it out on the Porsche and I'll let you guys know how it goes.